Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share a mostly spooky middle grade book haul with you. A huge stack from my library. I also have a much smaller stack that I have purchased myself and these are being added to my library. Before we get into the books, I just wanted to remind you that I am co-hosting Bookathon with Keisha and Gabby. I have an entire announcement video, um, but basically we're going to be reading spooky middle grade books for an entire week in October from October 10th until the 16th. And I'm really excited about it. So that's why I have so many spooky middle grades to share with you. Um, and that's why I checked out so many from my library because this is a new ish genre to me. I've read middle grade before. I have read a few spooky metal grades, but I've never done like the deep dive into spooky metal grade. I am going to narrow down my TBR and I hope to share a specific bookathon TBR video once I have it narrowed down. But in the meantime, let's just do a middle grade book haul, shall we? We're gonna go through the library books first. I have The OK Witch and The OK Witch in the Hungry Shadow. Both of these are graphic novels by Emma Steinkellner. And I have heard really good things about this one. Um, and I definitely do want to own my own copies of these if I end up liking it. Middle grade graphic novels are supposed Superior. Um, so this is the first book. This is the second book and I'm really excited to read these even if they don't end up on my bookathon TBR. I also picked up two more graphic novels and these are hardcover so um, it's a little deceiving but they are graphic novels. Um, the first one is Witches of Brooklyn and the second one is Witches of Brooklyn What the Hex and I <laughs> love that. Um, so yeah I'm also really excited to get to these even if they don't officially end up on my TBR for Bookathon. Um, okay so the next two books that I got are part of a series as well. These are books you know they have words in there um, but the first one is The Beast and the Bethany by Jack Meggett Phillips and I actually heard about this book from Keisha. She has a spooky middle grade book recommendation from last year and she recommended this book so I got the first two. Um, then I found this one totally on my own, um, The Artifact Hunters by Janet Fox. It just sounds like it's going to be really really amazing. He's on a treasure hunt through time. With tensions in Prague rising at the height of World War II, Isaac Wolf is forced to leave home with nothing more than a small backpack and a pennant in the shape of an eternity knot. His parents believe the pennant will keep him safe if he can discover what it really means. And I am just so excited about this. What I love about middle grade is they sometimes have like illustrations or really cool like um kind of chapter headers and stuff like that. I also picked up Ghost Squad. I know this was like making its rounds on booktube like last year or the year before by Clarabelle Ortega. Um, and this says, ghosts are more than just the family business. Shortly before Halloween, Lucy and her best friend Sid cast a spell that accidentally awakens a malicious spirit wrecking havoc throughout their hometown of St. Augustine, Florida. Oh, I've been to St. Augustine. Together they must join forces with Sid's witch grandmother Babette and her tubby tabby chunk to fight the haunting head on and reverse the curse to save the town and Lucy's firefly spirits before it's too late. Then another recommendation from Keisha is Midnight at the Barclay Motel and I'm especially excited because it's a mystery and this one has a map. Okay, first of all, let's just take a moment for the little cat up there. But let me show you. Look at this cutie map. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. It's like a little, it's so cute. I just, I love it. And then um, there's like this illustration. And I don't want to show too many this illustration. But this one 
When JJ Jacobson convinced his mom to accept a surprise invitation to an all expenses paid weekend getaway at the illustrious Barclay Hotel, he never imagined that he'd find himself in the midst of a murder mystery. So oh, I'm definitely going to make this a priority. Um, also came across this one on my own, Gloomtown by Ronald um, L. Smith. And I love this cover. It's giving me pirates. It's giving me seaside. It's giving me gloom. I just love it so much. Um, in the back, look. Oh, I think I want to own this one. But when 12-year-old Rory applies for a job at a spooky mansion in his gloomy seaside town, he gets a bad feeling about the owner, Lord Foxglove. But he and his mom need the money, so he takes the position anyway. He soon finds out that his new boss is not just strange, he's not even human. It's his friendship and family save the day and this delightfully creepy tale um, imbued with magic and seafaring mythology. Oh my goodness. Oh, does that not sound amazing? And that cover though. A uh, couple more here. The next one is The Haunting of Henry Davis by Catherine Siebel. Um, another one that I came across by myself, but it looks like they're having like a little seance or something like that. Love this cover. Ghosts only haunt when they when they've left something behind. When Henry Davis moves into the neighborhood, Barbara Ann and her classmates at Washington Carver Elementary don't know what to make of him. He's pale, small, odd. For curious Barbara Ann, Henry's also a riddle. A boy who sits alone at recess sketching in a mysterious notebook. A boy she soon learns who's being haunted by a ghost named Edgar. And then the last one from the library is The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. Um, and this one has really lovely illustrations in it as well. Like can we take a moment? Can we take a moment? Um, and there's there's colored ones and there's um, the chapter headers have different pumpkins. So like here's chapter one and then I'll show you chapter two. Chapter two is a different one. So I love that about it and the full color illustrations and non-color illustrations in here as well. So really excited to get to this. Um, let me give you a quick little synopsis. So there's this person. He takes eight trick-or-treaters on an unforgettable journey to find their missing friend. Travel through time and space from the tombs of ancient Egypt to the gargoyles of Notre Dame Cathedral all the way to the cemeteries of Mexico on El Dia de los Muertes, the Day of the Dead. Is Pip still alive? And if so, can his friend save him from a ghastly fate before it's too late? Quickly, we will go through some middle grade books that I have acquired in the last couple of months. So I picked up some graphic novels. These are not really spooky, but I picked up these graphic novels at the book exchange. Um, I got the eighth book in the Babysitter's Club graphic novel series. Um, I think I've only, I only own like one one through four but I saw this one there and I used my store credit on it. Uh, this one is Logan Likes Marianne and I just I really love this graphic novel series. The series actually mean, means a lot to me like from my childhood and it's very nostalgic to me so anytime I see these I'll be picking them up. Um, Making Friends by Kristen Goodsnuck I think is how you say it. But I mean, friendship stories mean so much to me. Also, it came with this free bookmark that says this book should be a movie. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. That's what the art looks like. A little peek there. And then Roller Girl, which is a Newbery Honor book by Victoria Jameson. Keisha read this during I think it was Suns Out Books Out and um, that's this one fell on my radar and the last few are um, spooky middle grade books. The next one is Catherine Arden's Small Spaces. This is the first book in a series. I think it's a four book series or a five book series uh, but Keisha highly recommends this series as a whole. I think the second book and the last book are her favorites but had to get the first book and it has like this scarecrow, a school bus, 11 year old Ollie and her two best friends Coco and Brian set out on a chilling adventure in the woods with nightfall fast descending and ever watchful eyes of scarecrows on their backs. What has begun as an unremarkable school trip to a nearby farm 
soon becomes a frightening journey into the world behind the mist. So excited to read that first book. Um, next up is The Bewitching of Avalyn Jones, which is actually the second book. The first book, The Haunting of Avalyn Jones, I have also ordered and it's on its way to me, but it's running a little bit late. So I have the first and the second books. The first book is actually the group read for a bookathon. So if you plan on participating, go ahead and grab your copy. And then if I love the first book as much as I think I'm going to, I'm probably going to dive right into the second book as well. And then the last two books that I picked up were from the book exchange. The first one being Juniper Berry. And this one is by M. P. Kolowski. Um, and a lot of people saw me haul this and they were like saying it's like one of their favorites. They really like it. So it's about this girl, 11 year old girl. I think she's 11 years old. Maybe that's just what I have stuck in my head, but she is the daughter of the world's famous film stars. And yet she is alone on a cold and rainy night. She follows her parents as they sneak out of the house and enter the woods. So the story is going to go from there. Very excited. Don't want to read too much more. And then I never heard anybody talk about this one. So I kind of found this one on my own. But the premise does remind me a little bit of uh, the Dead Romantics, which I absolutely loved. So I love this creepy cover. This is The Ghost in the Glass House by Carrie Wallace. And um, it's a 1920s seaside resort town, which, I mean, you saw me have that other resort town, Gloontown. I love seaside towns. This is 12 year old Clara. She discovers a mysterious glass house in the backyard of her new summer home. And then she falls in love with Jack, the ghost of a boy who she can't remember, who he can't remember who he was before before he died. Oh my gosh, does that not sound amazing? Anyway, those are my middle grade books that I picked up from the library and the ones that I'm hauling. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got some ideas of things that you can add to your TBR if you're interested in middle grade, specifically spooky middle grade. And if you have any recommendations for spooky middle grades or middle grade graphic novels that you think that I would like, leave them down in the comment section down below. I hope you guys are having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye guys! <music>